Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to the class. So tonight is Friday and uh, we're moving on. So for first of all, of course, we're going to check about the platform. So this is the class of tonight. And there you will see the question for tonight. So there is no homework for tonight. But remember that for this incoming Monday, we need to finish unit one, unit two, and the midterm test. Before the class, please, uh, next Monday. I mean, you can do it on Saturday or on Sunday. So you can finish those two parts in the middle test. Also remember that on Monday we will have your presentation. So I hope you have an idea. And I mean, it's not going to be a huge thing, but I hope you have the time to work on that. We're going to check about the attendance then. Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. Present teacher. Good. Andres Giovanni Valdivieso Portillo. Present. Good. David Samuel Galdames Monterrosa. Present teacher. Good. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. Good. Fernando Cosme Morales. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Iriana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmín Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present. Good. Juan Miguel Bran Mejía. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. William Alexander Ramírez Flores. Present. Good. Jessica Janari Cortez Diaz. Suleima Ivonne Moreno de Hernández. Erwin Lagos Andrade. Present teacher. Very good. Perfect. Okay. Sorry, okay. teacher. I'm here, Fernando. Okay, perfect. Me too, Heidi. Good, good. good. Uh, Fernando Cosme. Good, I gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Juan Miguel. Juan Miguel, okay. Okay. Very good. So we are going to start the class of tonight. So I'm looking forward for your presentations on Monday. So I'm very, very excited about that one. So before we move on uh, on the class of today, a question for you. Um, do you believe it's important to know more or less, of course, um, what kind of learning styles other people have? I mean, your audience have for you to deliver a presentation? Sorry, teacher, what was the question? Okay, so do you believe is it important to know what learning style the, do your audience have? So the people that is going to be listening to you in a presentation. Well, I think, I think it is important, but uh, I think it's uh, some kind of difficult because uh, maybe we don't know much things about, about the, the people that are listening to us. Uh, I think, in my particular opinion, I think that we need to to do is to be prepared to do some something for the kinesthetic, something for the something for every kind of uh, learning styles, and uh, we need to move for the the, the personalized movement, uh, learn 
for that kind of, we need to to expose to speak for the learners in 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 for the visual we need to do a little of every styles that everything get what is important for them because i i, I think it is not 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 easy it's not easy it is an ideal situation, but I think it's not easy to know. Not always. It's easy to know what is a learning style from the people that are listening. Very good. You are right. So it's not easy because, I mean, all the houses are different. Remember that also we were checking before in other modules, we were checking about how millennials are different from um, the baby boomers and many others. So, of course, that also affects but it's a very good idea for us to, I mean, maybe not to know all uh, the learning styles that everybody has in the audio, but at least to know which one exists. So we can consider that one whenever we are going to create a presentation and deliver that one, right? Yes. Good. So we're going to check a video about that one so we at least get to know what is this about. So at the end, please provide comments and opinions so here we go my friends going to look at learning styles specifically how you as a presenter a public speaker can engage your listeners more effectively through appealing to the different learning styles so let's get into the details Hello again, friends, and welcome back. If this is the first time you're joining us, Communication Coach, this channel is here for people who are probably like you, rising leaders who want to increase your personal impact so you can lead all the people around you to higher levels of excellence. And part of leadership is communication and teaching and standing up and presenting. And when we're doing this, one of the best ways that you can engage your audience is to think in terms of the different learning styles they probably have. So by appealing to auditory, visual, and kinesthetic learners in your preparation for your presentation, you're much more likely to engage everybody overall. And so that's what I'm recommending, to use these three learning styles as a way to make sure you're appealing to a wide range of your listeners. So the first type of learning style is called auditory. This has all to do with the ears. That's the sense we're going after. And in my experience, a lot of public speakers are already pretty good at this. If you think about it, when you're preparing your message, you are crafting out what you're going to say, how you're going to say it. And so you've already worked on your words pretty well. So if you want to take it to the next level and appeal to our ears in a slightly different way, think about the kinds of metaphors that you could use. Think, think about the kind of colorful language you can use, like analogies and alliteration and possibly rhyme. I'm not a rhymer, but I know some people, it fits their style. And so these are ways to take the normal crafted language you've already worked on and pump it up a little bit more to appeal to your auditory listeners. So that's the first learning style. Second learning style is visual. And a lot of people are visual learners. And so to appeal to your visual learners, you want to appeal obviously to their eyes. The easiest way to do this is because you're gonna be presenting the whole time, you have to use your body to maximum advantage. You wanna gesture, you wanna move with a purpose on your platform, on your stage. You might even go out a little bit into your audience like an, an aisle or something to engage them visually in this way because their eyes have to follow you around. You don't wanna be distracting and just pace for no reason, but you wanna move with a purpose and that's one of the ways you can do it. Another way to do it is through better visual aids, like your PowerPoints. You want to show images and something compelling to look at. When I first started making PowerPoints many years ago teaching, I only had text up there. And it was very boring. And my students were like, are you kidding me? This is just black and white, tiny font. These PowerPoints are jammed. And so I had to go that extra step and figure, how can I make my visual aids a little bit more visually appealing because that's what they're supposed to be in the first place. Speaking of visual, aid, visual aids, you probably want to use an actual object if you can instead of just a PowerPoint. So for example, if you're talking about exercising, instead of just having an image up there or talking about your exercising, you want to have an actual object like a prop of some sort. So if you're talking about lifting weights, maybe you bring some weights up there. If you're talking about 
doing other kinds of exercises, you want to show some kind of visual object or prop to bring it to life. Way more engaging than simply saying it or even showing a picture of it. One of the best props, by the way, is an actual person. So here's another tip for visual learners. You can bring up a volunteer, so that's one more person for them to look at. And if that person is demonstrating something with you, they're doing a role play or a skit of any kind, that really brings it to life visually because they're hearing it certainly, the role play, but when you see people act it out, that's visually appealing to them. They're much more likely to remember it. So there's almost endless visual approaches that you could use and this is one of the ways you can do it by thinking in terms of, okay, now how can I appeal to my visual learners? And the last learning style we'll talk about is kinesthetic. I actually just say physical learners because that's the easiest way to remember it. This is where you want to engage people physically. You ask them to do something with their hands, with their bodies, that's going to help them learn. So for example, you may have seen this, if you've ever watched a magician in a live audience, oftentimes when they pick volunteers, they don't just pick volunteers, they wanna make it seem random, maybe it is random, and they ask them to, let's say, toss a ball. They would say, okay, I'm gonna to toss this ball. And after a few tosses, whoever it lands on, that person will be the volunteer that comes up to do this demonstration. And one of the reasons that works is, first of all, for a magician, it looks at least random, but also it engages people doing something physically. There's a kind of energy that happens when people are looking for the ball and looking to catch it and tossing it because they're doing something physically and that's really a great way to involve people to get them to handle an object like that, like a ball. Another thing you can do is ask people to do a little drawing or a sketch where they are. Maybe they're taking notes. Instead of just the words, you can ask them to sketch something out with their hands. That's a little more engaging physically. I once had a speaker do this right recently where I was actually in the audience and he had us draw a certain kind of picture on the top of this sheet of paper and then another one in a different, and it was just like stick figures but he had colored pencils out on all the tables and we folded our paper in half. There were physical things for us to do and it was way better than him, again, just showing us a picture or telling us with his words. We were engaged physically and that really helped. Another thing you can do is ask your listeners to do something physical, like stand up, go talk to somebody in this part of the room. As long as it helps make the point of your message, as long as it's not gonna embarrass them or be overly weird, you want to engage them physically. So there might be a reason for them to move their bodies and you want to make sure that you don't neglect that. You got to consider that. How can I get them to move their bodies in a way that helps them make the point, helps them learn? So when I do any kind of presentation, I always use these three learning styles as a mental map. How can I take my message and then pump it up a little by appealing to each of these learning strategies? So I make sure I have these three approaches throughout every presentation I do. And that's much more likely to engage everybody. And by the way, even if I'm a visual learner, I will still benefit from the other two learning styles if the presenter is doing those pretty well. It's not like visual only appeals to visual. All of these styles help all kinds of learners. You just wanna make sure you don't neglect any and you cover all of your bases. So question of the day, what kind of learner are you and what are the strategies that you would recommend if you were in the audience? How can we better appeal to you as an auditory, visual, or kinesthetic learner? I would love to hear your comments in that section below. And as a reminder, this is part two of a very short video series on how to engage your audience. Don't forget to check out that other video and I'll put a link to the description to that uh, below the video. So take care, I'll see you in the next video. Good, so um, any comments, any? It is important, I, I, I don't know, I don't know what are the names of, in, in English, uh, auditory learning, the visual learning, kinesthetic learning, but it's important. There's uh, the three kinds of uh, learners that we can have. It's important to, to prepare something for, for each one. I think, I am not an, an expert, but I think that we, uh, every one of us do the things like the way that I like or we like the, the things that are doing. If I am an auditory learning, I, 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 I would like to speak, speak, speak. And if I am a visual learner, I make a, a, a presentation of PowerPoint or something like that. And uh, some kind of that action. I, I, I think we need to, to go out of the box 
and seeing in, in everything to, to engage all of the auditory. Very good, perfect. So yeah, that is the thing, right? So we know that we are different learners and we will have different learners, kinds and the audio, audience. So definitely you need to take in consideration that whenever you create a presentation and deliver that one. Very good. Any other comments or opinion? Nothing else. Uh, um, in my case, uh, in my personal case, I I like the kinesthetic style because uh, for me it's like you're learning by doing something. Okay, so if you in my case, I I um, I deliver courses and presentations for other people. And uh, the way that I uh, deliver the content, it's about to, to doing something, okay? In order to, um, to practice it, okay? So um, for example, if you have, a, or if you are a sign, sign up, yeah, in a, for example, in a Excel course, uh, you want um, you want to learn only by listening and not only uh, by visual. Okay, so in this case, for me, applies the kinesthetic style because um, until um, you are practicing, you are doing a the the no you are following the steps yeah in order to uh to learn uh, for example how to make a pivot table how to analyze some data and uh, present it and things like that okay so for me uh, it's important to yeah do the two other uh, uh, type of learnings, types of learning, but I focused in aesthetic style. For me, it's not, not yet uh, the most important, but um, when you have to, to do something, uh, not only, for example, it's not a workshop about uh, um, neural, neural, neural linguistic, or something like this, yeah? yeah. It's more this for me. This type of content is more oriented to uh, to como interiorizar, to interiorize, maybe. Yeah. Not to interiorize this type of content, but if you are trying to do something in your computer, obviously the the main thing it's about to practice it. So. I, I already I oriented my um, my learning style in the kinesthetic uh, style. Yeah. Okay. So that happens. That is true. So uh, when we identify what kind of learner we are and we feel very comfortable learning by that style, uh, that is the one that we are more comfortable also to deliver a presentation or to teach something, right? Because since uh, for us it's the best experience, yeah, that is true. We try to do something like that. And uh, yeah, definitely it's something that we always are aimed to do. Um, of course, you cannot forget about the other styles because yeah, I mean, people are different and we need to consider everything. Not only whenever you are speaking with other people, but also since you are creating the presentation. So you need to think about the resources that you are going to have and then check what will be the best option, right? Good, any other comments or opinion on this? Okay, we're going to continue and we're gonna check. There are two articles that we're gonna read. Types of presentation, so. Uh, it says presentations are used in almost every sphere. 
be it business presentation, education, or even entertainment, naturally there is no single solution for a presentation. In fact, there's a lot of things to consider when you choose to, the types of presentation. While your presentation's goal certainly matters, there's also the visuals, the length, the type of presentation style, and a lot of other features to consider. In other words, that's a lot to choose from. How to figure out what suits you best among the types of PowerPoint presentation? Let's review some of the common ones and you'll certainly get some fresh ideas. So let's check about these ones. Uh, David, could you please help me with the uh, number one? Okay. Type one, elevator pitch. One of the most common type of presentations in business, the elevator pitch is quick, informative, and incredible versatility. It derives its name from the business world, where sometimes you only have time during the elevator ride to present your idea and persuade your potential investors. The initial type of presentation is in business doesn't actually require slides since it's basically a speech lasting up to three minutes that explain your idea and its benefits. However, in a broader sense, it is a name used for short presentations up to 10 slides, describing the main points and having minimal visual support, mostly centered around simple infographics or graphs. Good, what do you get on this first uh, type? Okay, the, the, it is important that the, we need, we need to know how to say what we need to say in five minutes, in 10 minutes, in 20 minutes. And uh, we need to focus in uh, the main idea and it needs something around the, the main idea we need to add if we have more time. But the, the, the first uh, impression, the first uh, things we need to say, is we, we need to say it in the, in, the, in the best way. That is important because in the, in the business uh, area, uh, the people don't have time. And uh, if you have the opportunity to speak with a, a leader of our, our management or a CEO of a company, they they will tell you i give you one or two minutes and uh, if you can say me what you need to say in that time for the reason is the elevator pitch and uh, we need to to present the information in in the time of five minutes 10 minutes 20 minutes it is important we need to, to construe that around the main idea, and then we, we need to, to consider the time that we have. If we have a little time, we need to do chore. If we have more time, we can explain, we can stand with explaining more things about the main idea, I think. Very good, perfect. So yeah, sometimes it happens and you are very right. So. Uh, in the business world, sometimes time is is a resource that is, I mean, very, very limited, right? So, um, yeah, you want to do some business, you want to hire somebody, but you don't have the time to be one hour speaking about an idea. So sometimes you need to do the first one, that is the elevator pitch. I mean, you have three, four minutes for you to explain your idea. Uh, why should I invest in you and your idea? Uh, the benefits, I mean, if you cannot explain that simple time, uh, the simple ideas, then maybe it doesn't work. So if you don't convince me in the first minutes, it's not gonna, it's not gonna happen. So that that is uh, something very, very common in the business, mostly that in the US sometimes, right? And uh, we need to consider that whenever we use this one, we need to be very careful on what we are going to present the words that we're going to use, the message that we want to comply, and any audiovisual that is going to be there because you don't have much time. So everything is relevant. 
Good. Number two says uh, informative presentation. Juan Miguel. Teacher, type two, informative presentation. This type of presentation is usually a longer one. It's usually a longer one. And naturally it contains a lot of information since its goal is to inform the audience on a subject. This is probably the most common type of presentation style for college, but it's widely used in, a, in, in business as well, mainly for internal tasks like explanation of the change of the changes in companies structure etc. This type of presentation usually features a lot of text and may also include rather complex visuals. So there's naturally a risk of being really boring. A good thing to do in this presentation type is try to make it interactive, ask questions, add some videos, and so on. Good, what do you get in this one? That is true because uh, um, in, a, in, in this type of presentation or in this type of uh, your uh, speaking, it's about to inform. Yeah, like for example, results of, uh, for example, any sorby or a, a the, um, for example, what is the, what is on what stage is a, um, is a project on, and what ha, what are the advances? No. Yeah. On, yeah. What are the advances and what is the things that are left to complete the task or the project or something like this? and how to approach to, in order to finish it, yeah? Um, you think uh, th this is a, a personal uh, um, approach. If you are trying to uh, do an informative presentation, uh, for me, it's less, um, the less text, and the more data, data resume, yeah? Mm -hmm. Data resume uh, presented because the, the object, no, no, the, the, the objective, yeah, of this kind of presentation, it's just like the name, informative, yeah? But not try to, to boring or to get bored the, the audience, yeah? Uh, for me, you have to be quickly in this kind of presentation because uh, all, all the people in, in your audience, like uh, the reading says there, uh, could be co-workers or uh, in, in, your, in the same uh, department or at least in the same company. So, all of them are related to this topic or to, or, or to this uh, situation. So you have to, to be the, the quickest that you, that, you, that you can, yeah, in order to, to not get bored or uh, to, to not get boring your presentation. Mm -hmm. Very good. So. Yeah, you are right. So uh, sometimes that happens. Sometimes you need to present results or inform about a procedure or a task or changes in, in the company. So, um, for example, one of the most common things that happens at banks, every year you need to present and deliver a training about money and laundry. So uh, that is like a lot of information, some data, some graphics, why is this important? Please be careful on this one. And yeah, a lot of things for them to read, uh, graphics, numbers, statistics. Um, and yeah, it's kind of difficult because I mean, what can you do? I mean, you need to present that one to be sure that everybody is aware on the information that you are presenting. But of course you need to be careful on not 
becoming boring because I mean you really need them to to understand what is this about and what to do in case something arrives. So very good, perfect. For example, teacher, if you are presenting the annual plan advances, uh, you have to be quick quickly because uh, all all the people in in your audience are your co-workers and they just need maybe to know uh, how this the stages are and how fast or how long for example they have to to know in order to complete the task or the projects or something like this more uh, resume information instead of a lot of text because you are presenting results not a not for example you're not you're not explaining a topic related to medicine or something like this is more a um more punctual yeah that is so true and that is a very common mistake that people do i mean sometimes they start talking about the history of the company the foundations um, yeah we can compare with the last year and this year and what are uh, the goals for the next year but other than that yeah we need to go and present exactly what we need right good storytelling uh, jessica janari not possible uh, let's see fernando ernesto cosme uh, okay storytelling yeah please yeah Another great type of presentation in business or actually any other is a sphere. A sphere is the right pronunciation. Sphere, yeah. So, okay. It's the storytelling presentation type. In essence, it, it, it is a, a presentation built like a story where your, point, your points are illustrated by examples, either from your life or from, you, or from life in general. This presentation type is usually heavy on text content, but using visual support can make for a much better experience. Even the most interesting story might be rather dull when it's too long. It is too long. Using media may present a great distraction for your audience that would, however, still keep them on track. Okay, what do you get on this one? Uh, I, I, I think maybe that kind of presentation is like a, is, is to inspire the, the audience in, in many times because it's, it's like a, a, maybe we will present a, a, history, a story of motivation fears and maybe the, when so, some, maybe some companies reach their goals or, or, or some, something starts, uh, when a company maybe is uh, it's down maybe in sales or or in reputation and how the companies uh, uh, try to to get better and and they grow up and all, all the maybe all the the process to to reach the company how is 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 it is now how is it, what is actually the state of the company it is successful um, maybe that's it okay perfect so uh, yes yeah, sometimes um, as we also discussed before it's very useful to use other experiences or in this case a story right for you to present uh, something that is going to impact the audience and as we were telling also before sometimes that is the part that people is, uh, are discussing whenever they finish the presentation, it's like, oh, that story was very interesting. And they are discussing about those things and it's because they were shocked, they were impacted in a way for the story. So it's a very good element. Of course, it's not possible to use it at any presentation, but whenever it's possible and you want to touch people through your presentation, this is a very good thing. A question for everybody, what is dull? Please check on your dictionaries. Some kind of fool, teacher. Kind of fool, very good. Not 
the most intelligent thing. Good. Okay, number four, visual presentation. Uh, Dora Elizabeth. Type four, visual presentation. This presentation is where the steps part gives way to the visual, graph, infographics, videos, and pictures. Visualization PowerPoint. Everything that can illustrate your point properly will fit. This type of PowerPoint presentation is probably the most captivating for the audience and certainly the most good looking. To success with this presentation, you will have to use visual that could require minimum explanation. Explanation. To a, explanation. To a certain extent, just presentation can actually present themselves with little participation of a speaker. Your task as a presenter here is to guide the audience through your amazing visual. Good, what do you get on this one? Uh, uh, the, I think the speaker uh, help with a, uh, uh, a visual, uh, visual stacks like a graphic, PowerPoint, or pictures, videos. It's like a, your class teacher. <laughs> okay, very good. So yes, I mean sometimes visual are going to be uh, the ones that are going to show you what is this about, right? So, and uh, the only thing that you can do as a presenter is to uh, to show them, to guide them what is this about, ask questions about how, how was this applying uh, things at that one. Of course, you need to work in finding the right picture, the right video, the, uh, the right circumstances. So it's going to be according to what you want to achieve on the presentation. So. But it's a very good thing. I mean, this is something I, I really like this one, to be honest with you. Okay, number five says type five, a roadmap presentation. Um, Giselle. Hey, teacher. <clears throat> type five, roadmap presentation. A rather innovative and mostly a type of presentation in business. The roadmap is built to show how to get the objective. For presentation design service, an objective is usually presented at the beginning. And the whole presentation basically consists of the milestones that should be achieved on the way to said objective. Among the different type of presentation, this one is really heavy on infographics. What is more, there's plenty of opportunities here to experiment with unusual slide layouts and the continuity of image and slides. Since such presentations tend to follow the road structure and use the road imagery in the design. Good, what do you get on this one? Mm, let me check again. Mm, well, I think that this kind of this type of presentation of like has like a characteristic that you can use um, like um, unusual type of slides, if we can call like that. And also you can be like a little bit creative with your presentation. And uh, I think that maybe the the I don't know, like the main characteristic of this type of presentation is that you present like the objective at, uh, and you, that is like your, your, um, your guide, the objective, and then you can, uh, the structure of your presentation depends on that objective that you present at the beginning. And also you can be a little bit, uh, like I said, creative and, it can result at the end not to worry for your audience, this type of presentation too. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, very good, perfect. So that is it. So this is going to be all connected. You are going to go from level one to level two or step one to step two. And yeah, you use a lot of audiovisuals. Um, so since everything is connected and you use kind of links and things like that sometimes this presentation is kind of heavy, but I mean, nowadays, I mean, we have powerful computers and a lot of internet. So uh, if you have the right resources, you shouldn't have any problem. Good, number six, problem solving presentation. Uh, let's see, this is for Francisco Eduardo. Not possible, okay, Marcus. Okay, and the problem solving presentation. Uh, you have probably guessed in this presentation, your content will be built around a third time, a third time problem for which you then design a solving strategy. It's a pretty universal type of presentation since it can be used in pretty much every third. What is especially good about the, this presentation is that you can apply any of the problem solving techniques to, to it, which may you really flexible in terms of structure. What is more, the problem might and actually should resonate with the audience, increasing the involvement and the interest in what you are talking about. Okay, what did you get on this one? Okay. Um, okay, I understand that this kind of, of presentation is um, can apply to solve um, almost uh, any problem. And uh, for example, uh, about the environment or industry, we can apply this this kind of presentation to to make more interesting for the audience the topic and also engage the the audience to the to the presentation. So uh, there are many techniques we can use to to any topic uh, related with this type of presentation. Um, it's very flexible and uh, this kind of, of presentation. So it's powerful to use this, this kind of presentation. Okay, very good. So yes, this is actually something very good. I mean, because it doesn't matter what you are going to present. I mean, you can adapt this kind of presentation. So, uh, and yeah, it's going to be like presenting a problem and ask everybody to solve that one. So that is why this is very good and very interesting because everybody is engaged. Everybody's participating, interacting. I mean, getting the causes of the problem and then trying to solve, trying to understand more, asking questions. So this is very good. And that's why it's one of the most uh, common because since everybody is trying to, to achieve something, I mean, they are integrated as one, as a team. Very good. Okay, number seven, instructor presentation, um, Andres Giovanni. Number seven, type seven, instructor presentation. This presentation type is quite similar to the informative presentation. There's lots of content and lot of text to deliver in your speech. It's a, it is a perfect type of presentation for really complex topics that require high levels of understanding from both the audience and the presenter. Instructor presentations usually feature quite a lot of visual support and are longer than the average presentation. While it might be hard to make the presentation as like as, a, for example, the elevator pitch or a visual presentation, it is better to reserve this style 
for the subjects in which both you and your audience are really interested. You can also use professional presentation service to help you to help you with it. Okay, what did you understand on this one? That you you can have a a lot of resources to make a presentation with this, with this kind of presentation. Okay. So this is maybe like the uh, like the more how can I say um, the one that we use uh, in the past, right? So a lot of content, a lot of uh, things that you are going to present. It doesn't mean that only the instructor is going to speak, but yeah, the instructor is going to present a lot of information. Is going to be loaded, and it's not that very good idea to use this, I mean, in every presentation, right? So yes, you're going to be in front presenting, but uh, you need to interact with other people. But sometimes, I mean, if this is going to be about a very tech, uh, a very high technique things, high level of something, uh, well, definitely it's going to be the best option. Sometimes as I was telling you, um, there is no other way, right? So this is it. You need to present exactly what you need to. So. Sometimes uh, you just go ahead and provide the information, right? Uh, number eight, it says text only presentation. So that one is for William Ramirez. Not possible, Jarvin Isaac. Text only presentation. At first place, it may seem like a really bad idea, but who said the text can look beautiful? Text only presentation allows you to, to throw away all unnecessary elements and make the audience focus entirely on your content. Keep in mind that this presentation type doesn't suggest that tool use wall of the text of where your audience to die. On the contrary, you can conveniently, conveniently organize your text into bullet points and one sentences a statement that can be great backbone to your speech. Good, what did you understand on this one? For example, sometimes you can make a great presentation only with text if you put it the correct way. And for example, it depends, your, it depends of your audience because some audience prefer to, to read and not listen what you are speaking. Okay. Yeah, sometimes that happens. I mean, for example, here in English, since we're going to we're getting new vocabulary, getting pronunciation and things like that. This is something that I really also like to do. I mean, to present something so you can read and then we can analyze. So uh, this is perfect for me uh, for this level. Of course, if we were on the basic level, definitely it's going to be totally different. And uh, definitely sometimes we can use some other things, but um, this is something very nice because it allows us everybody to understand different things, get new vocabulary, and move on with the topics that we have uh, too, right? So it's a very good thing. And it doesn't have to have a lot of text. I mean, text only only means that you are going to have the most important things. You are going to go through the levels. I mean, number one, number two, number three, explain that one, interact with people, ask questions. So yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be kind of good, right? So the conclusion, Heidi. Yeah, please. There's no shortage of presentation types and creative ideas. Depending on the type of your current and message that you copy, you can choose any of them. But what is more, you can combine them as well, creating a unique and engaging work that would really impress your audience. 
we really hope that this article will give you some ideas of where to start with your presentation and what to path to choose. Good, what do you get on that one? All of the ideas are great, but to be honest, they only get me more nervous for Monday's presentation. <laughs> really, are you <laughs> nervous? Yeah. Ah, don't be. Yeah, I mean, a little bit. Okay, no, but uh, for too many all, ideas. Uh, yeah, I know that there are many things that everybody wants to say. Um, yeah, you are going to. I mean, we have two hours for that one. So, um, and mm -hmm. uh, yes, can you hear me? Hello. 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 Can you hear me? Hello. I have trouble connection. Oh, Were you yes. telling me? I, I, uh, yeah, I was telling you that, uh, I mean, enjoy that one. So this is like having fun, you know, it's like uh, speaking about something that you really like, really, really care, present something. Of course, we're going to be listening to you, but it's like a practice, practicing thing, right? So it's like having fun. Um, it's like, do you remember when we present the very first time I was telling you that I, I, I mean, I, I am not a teacher per se. I have experienced a lot at the university and I really enjoy teaching. And that's why I'm here because I really like to, to be with you, to speak with you, to talk. I listen to your questions and, and we move on. So that is the idea for you to enjoy what you are going to present. Um, if you enjoy that one, everything is going to be fine. So, and since you, it's going to be for free, uh, because sometimes you know what I do. Sometimes I say to everybody, everybody's going to present the same, so we can compare what is going to happen, how is going to present one or other thing, the same topic. And uh, I will enjoy it. I'm almost ready. Very good. I'm very very excited to be honest with you, uh, to listen to what you are going to say, and I know that you are going to do a very good job. That is for sure. Hello. Hello. Hello, isn't Peter looking for? Can you hear me? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Yeah, I guess uh, Heidi has some connection problems, so that happens sometimes. So no worries. Very good. So there are many ideas many tips many things of course we are going to check some others on the other hour by now we're going to check the attendance because it's almost time so let's see how it goes ana claudia gonzalez velasquez andres giovanni valdivieso portillo present good david samuel galdames monterrosa Present teacher. Good. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. Good. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin Gonzalez Martinez. Present teacher. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Present. Good. Present. Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present teacher. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present. Good. Juan Miguel Bran Mejía. Good. Ramon Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ivette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. William Alexander Ramirez Flores. Present. Good. Jessica Janari Cortez Diaz. I'm here. Good. 
Zuleima Ivonne Moreno de Hernández. Present. Good. Erwin Lagos Andrade. Present teacher. Very good, perfect. So let's move on. And now we're gonna see a little video. And this one is kind of interesting. It's actually one of, uh, got you Heidi. Yeah, sometimes you have some problems on the connection, I guess, but don't worry, I got you. Okay, thank you teacher. Okay, so we're gonna watch one of the videos that uh, we checked on the article yesterday. So let's see how it goes. At the end, of course, you are gonna tell me any comments or any opinions about what we will see. Here. So here we go. It's not that one, of course. The human voice. It's the instrument we all play. It's the most powerful sound in the world, probably. It's the only one that can start a war or say, I love you. And yet many people have the experience that when they speak, people don't listen to them. Why is that? How can we speak powerfully to make change in the world? What I'd like to suggest, there are a number of habits that we need to move away from. I've, I've assembled for your pleasure here seven deadly sins of speaking. I'm not pretending this is an exhaustive list, but these seven, I think, are pretty large. Habits that we can all fall into. First, gossip. Speaking ill of somebody who's not present. Not a nice habit, and we know perfectly well the person gossiping five minutes later will be gossiping about us. Second, judging. We know people who are like this in conversation, and it's very hard to listen to somebody if you know that you're being judged and found wanting at the same time. Third, negativity. You can fall into this. My mother, in the last years of her life, became very, very negative, and it's hard to listen. I remember one day I said to her, it's October the 1st today, and she said, I know, isn't it dreadful? <laughs> it's hard to listen when somebody's that negative. And another form of negativity, complaining. Well, this is the national art of the UK. It's, it's our national sport. We complain about the weather, about sport, about politics, about everything. But actually, complaining is viral misery. It's not spreading sunshine and lightness in the world. Excuses. We've all met this guy. Maybe we've all been this guy. Some people have a blame thrower. They just pass it on to everybody else and don't take responsibility for their actions. And again, hard to listen to somebody who's being like that. Penultimate, the six of the seven, embroidery, exaggeration. It demeans our language, actually, sometimes. For example, if I see something that really is awesome, what do I call it? <laughs> and then, of course, this exaggeration becomes lying, out and out lying, and we don't want to listen to people we know are lying to us. And finally, dogmatism. The confusion of facts with opinions. When those two things get conflated, you're listening into the wind. You know, somebody is bombarding you with their opinions as if they were true. It's difficult to listen to that. So here they are, seven deadly sins of speaking. These are things I think we need to avoid. But is there a positive way to think about this? Yes, there is. I'd like to suggest that there are four really powerful cornerstones, foundations, that we can stand on if we want our speech to be powerful and to make change in the world. Fortunately, these things spell a word. The word is hail, and it has a great definition as well. I'm not talking about the stuff that falls from the sky and hits you on the head. I'm talking about this definition, to greet or acclaim enthusiastically, which is, I think, how our words will be received if we stand on these four things. So what do they stand for? See if you can guess. The H, honesty, of course. Being true in what you say, being straight and clear. The A is authenticity, just being yourself. A friend of mine described it as standing in your own truth, which I think is a lovely way to put it. The I is integrity, being your word, actually doing what you say, and being somebody people can trust. And the L is love. I don't mean romantic love, but I do mean wishing people well. For two reasons. First of all, I think absolute honesty may not be what we want. I mean, my goodness, you look ugly this morning. Mm, perhaps that's not necessary. Tempered with love, of course, honesty is a great thing. But also, if you're really wishing somebody well, it's very hard to judge them at the same time. I'm not even sure you can do those two things simultaneously. So hail. Also, now that's what you say, and it's like the old song, it is what you say, it's also the way that you say it. 
you have an amazing toolbox. This instrument is incredible, and yet this is a toolbox that very few people have ever opened. I'd like to have a little rummage in there with you now, and just pull a few tools out that you might like to take away and play with, which will increase the power of your speaking. Register, for example. Now, falsetto register may not be very useful most of the time, but there's a register in between. I'm not going to get very technical about this for any of you who are voice coaches. You can locate your voice, however. So if I talk up here in my nose, you can hear the difference. If I go down here in my throat, which is where most of us speak from most of the time. But if you want weight, you need to go down here to the chest. You hear the difference? We vote for politicians with lower voices. It's true. Because we associate depth with power uh, and with authority. That's register. And we have timbre. It's the, the way your voice feels. Again, the research shows that we prefer voices which are rich, smooth, warm, like hot chocolate. Well, if that's not you, that's not the end of the world. Because you can train. Go get a voice coach. And there are amazing things you can do with breathing, with posture, and with exercises to improve the timbre of your voice. Then prosody. I love prosody. This is the sing-song, the meta-language that we use in order to impart meaning. It's root one for meaning in conversation. People who speak all on one note are really quite hard to listen to if they don't have any prosody at all. That's where the word monotonic comes from, or monotonous, monotone. Also, we have repetitive prosody now coming in, where every sentence ends as if it were a question, when it's actually not a question, it's a statement. And if you repeat that one over and over, it's actually restricting your ability to communicate through prosody, which I think is a shame. So let's try and break that habit. Pace. I can get very, very excited by saying something really, really quickly, or I can slow right down to emphasize. And at the end of that, of course, is our old friend, silence. There's nothing wrong with a bit of silence in a talk, is there? We don't have to fill it with ums and ahs can be very powerful. Of course, pitch often goes along with pace to indicate arousal, but you can do it just with pitch. Where did you leave my keys? Where did you leave my keys? It's a slightly different meaning in those two deliveries. And finally, volume. I can get really excited by using volume. Sorry about that if I startled anybody. <laughs> or I can have you really pay attention by getting some people broadcast the whole time, try not to do that. That's called sodcasting. <laughs> Imposing your sound on people around you carelessly and inconsiderately, not nice. Of course, where this all comes into play most of all is when you've got something really important to do. It might be standing on a stage like this and giving a talk to people. It might be proposing marriage, asking for a raise, a wedding speech, whatever it is. If it's really important, you owe it to yourself to look at this toolbox and the engine that it's going to work on. And no engine works well without being warmed up. Warm up your voice. Actually, let me show you how to do that. Would you all like to stand up for a moment? I'm going to show you the six vocal warm-up exercises that I do before every talk I ever do. Anytime you're going to talk to anybody important, do these. First, arms up. Deep breath in and, and sigh out. <sighs> like that. One more time. <sighs> Very good. Now we're going to warm up our lips and we're going to go bo 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 bo. Very good. And now just like when you were a kid. Now your lips should be coming alive. We're going to do the tongue next with exaggerated la 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 la. Beautiful. You're getting really good at this and then roll an R. That's like champagne for the tongue. <laughs> Finally, and if I can only do one, the pros call this the siren. It's really good. It starts with we and goes to or. The we is high, the or is low. So you go, we, or, we, or. Fantastic. Give yourselves a round of applause. Take a seat. Thank you. <laughs> Next time you speak, do those in advance. Now, let me just put this in context to close. This is a serious point here. This is where we are now, right? We speak not very well into people who simply aren't listening in an environment that's all about noise and bad acoustics. I have talked about that on this stage in different phases. What would the world be like if we were speaking powerfully 
to people who are listening consciously in environments which were actually fit for purpose. Or to make that a bit larger, what would the world be like if we were creating sound consciously and consuming sound consciously and designing all our environments consciously for sound? That would be a world that does sound beautiful and one where understanding would be the norm. And that is an idea worth spreading. Thank you. Thank you. OK, what did you get from this one? Uh, I was watching, well, I was, I made the exercises <laughs> with him. <laughs> Fine. And, and yes, it's true that the, I now better understood the way how he uh, developed and designed and, and made all the, the speech he, he made because he was involving the audience to do something physical, which is all the recommendation this the speakers we saw in all the other videos they do and they recommend uh, but also i took notes about the use of our voice which is uh, the best tool we have we have to register the, the, you use the the tone of voice in order to create to emphasize words we need to uh, have a we can use at different pace, we can go fast, we can go slow in order to emphasize or making sure um, um, that an idea will be clear. And also we, beside the, the pitch, we need to use the volume uh, of our voice and that would help uh, to better deliver uh, the message we want uh, the audience uh, understands and that for me was he talk a lot of things because at the end he was talking about designing a sound concessions something like that and uh, and that was uh, he was so fast in the last part but it, uh, it, it's all like built uh, built uh, um, an understanding but it's not just Speak to speak is uh, speak with a purpose. That is what I understood. Very good, interesting. So, and that is so true. I mean, he made some of the techniques that we were discussing and so many things. Um, let me ask you, how did you feel whenever you made the, uh, the exercises? That... <laughs> better. Uh, I felt uh, better with that. Like, um, I, how can I tell you this? With no stress, like relief, relief. That would be the word, relief. Very good. So yes, that is important. I mean, whenever we see the video, it might it might look kind of silly, right? Kind of oh my goodness, why are they doing that one? But I mean, even whenever the the politicians, for example, they are going to speak in public, mm -hmm. or the singers, and they always do some exercises before. Uh -huh, with their voice, right? Enlarging and exaggerating the pronunciation letters, the la 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 la, <laughs> stuff like that. That's it. So if the experts do that one, mm -hmm. I mean, why? Why, why don't we? we? Exactly. Mm. So that would be very good. Perfect. Thank you, Ana Claudia. Okay. Okay. Any other comments or opinions on the video? I I noticed teacher that use uh that presentation with with a little text, not a full of text. Because uh, the, the presentation it was clearly concise, and he explained very clearly also uh, the, every concept, and they use uh, this kind of presentation, and also that they apply the interaction with with the audience, and I I I really. Well, I found really interesting the, the, the concept of hail. I I forgot the, the, the meaning of H. But honesty. Remember, it's, oh, thank you. Honesty, authenticity, integrity, love. Oh, they are very important concepts for the uh, presenter. And some part of the of the speech I don't understand. <laughs> be honest but and uh, some parts I, I understood and there are 
a really good to to be a, a, a good person or a really good message to other people. Very good, perfect. So you are so right. You noticed something that was very important. I mean, the presentation was not only with a few words, but also the way he presented. I mean, he presented Hill, the concept that he wanted to present it about Hill, and then he moved that one and made an acronym, and then he uh, get some other words from that one. So that is really interesting. I mean, and you can see the animation, it was not big deal, but it was something that get your attention when you are seeing that one, right? So very good. A presentation without picture. Yep. Only text. Uh, yeah, only text, that's it. Yeah, okay. images images are important sometimes depending on what you want to present, but sometimes it's not necessary, right? It's very effective presentation. Exactly, depending on what you want to achieve, right? It, it is important that only text, but uh, I think that uh, he managed the colors. The colors were important and the concept, the concept of high and then Convert the high and acronym is, is what is important. And the things that you need to do, the things that you need not to do, and how to do it. It is uh, very specific and, and informative, a lot of information in a very short time. Very good. So, yeah, actually, he presented very valuable information. A lot of things are very important and very nice. Any other comment on the video? Okay, there were two things that I, uh, I guess it was really nice. I mean, I mean the tips that he provided, for example, about the voice, right? That sometimes you need to slow down. Sometimes you can go faster. Sometimes you need to uh, raise your voice or get the voice down. And all those things, whenever you're speaking and you get the attention of the audience, it's going to impact them. So the way that you speak is very, very important. So you can emphasize, you can um, get the right idea into the people whenever you use exactly the tone of voice, the rhythm, everything that is related to that one. And another thing that was also kind of interesting is, I mean, you see that the presentation was behind him, right? He was not watching the presentation. He just click on the thing that he has on the hand and he knows what happens on the back. I mean, that means that he practiced like, I mean, he was speaking, he know what to do. Maybe he changed something. He said, no, this is not good. I'm going to change this part because uh, I want the audience to feel this way. So you see the presentation that is very nice, that he's speaking, that he makes some jokes, that he uh, clicks and everything is working perfectly. But that means that he invested time in the presentation, in researching, in uh, finding the correct words, the correct, uh, I mean, the only picture that he presented was the, uh, the toolbox, right? And then uh, how he was going to say many things in a few words, using the words properly. Uh, that was interesting. So if you can see here, this presentation is something that he didn't do in five minutes, in 20 minutes, right? He Actually, he was researching, he got the presentation, he practiced maybe, I don't know, one of the techniques that he might have or he have, I might use. And then the result is very good. So that's what we have been discussing, right? Many things that we need to, to do. If you really want to, to go and, and take the audience attention and also to come via message in the best way. Good. I, I I think the shorter the presentation, the more time you need to invest in the, in, in in it in the presentation. <laughs> and that is so true. Actually, I, I agree. I mean, because I mean, if you have one hour to exp to explain a topic with three or four points, yeah, you will be able to put a video, to put some images, to make a dynamic, sing a song, whatever you want to do. But if you have five minutes. Uh, to present something that is going to be very, very important. 
yeah, you need to be very careful and practice and be sure that everything is going to be working properly, right? Yeah. Perfect, perfect. So we're gonna continue. 10 tips for speaking to an audience. So this is related to the video that we just checked. Experienced speakers use techniques to make them more interesting to listen to and to help them hold the attention of their audience. Try some of the following the next time. So Monday, you give a presentation. <laughs> So the first one, actually, that's the one I was telling you about. Practice, practice, practice. Let's see. Um, Erwin Lagos. Yes, teacher. The 10 tips. Okay, teacher, or the number one or two? Number one, please. Okay, perfect. Practice, practice. Ah, okay, see, I remember. Practice, practice, practice. This is in excess of speaking well. It will help to keep to a time limit and will allow you to try our values technology in low pressure environment. It will also help you now your material well, which makes it easier to remember and stay on a point. On a point. Practice standing and speaking so that you get used to delivering talking before you have to give in your audience. Good, what did you get on this one? Okay, teacher, I remember when 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 it's when when first when uh, I remember in in Salvador we speak uh, I, I don't remember how to say in in English let me a moment. The practice will be you a teacher, yes? If oh, you okay. practice, yeah. Do you remember that the first okay? The first, okay? okay? The practice you will be a teacher. This is the that I can understand. Okay. Yes, if you practice and you try to do it in several times, you will have a good explanation when you speak with the audience. But there are many techniques in the video. It's a technique about the pace, how the intonation, how to speak. But uh, this is the technique. And after that, if you have a one item, you have you know what will we speak. Um, if you uh, if you if you have the knowledge that what you will speak and practice, how can you do it? You will do it so good, yeah, so well. That's it, teacher. Okay, perfect. So definitely, yeah, definitely. If you practice, you will become a master in something, right? Yeah. So you will be yes. able to master it. And uh, yeah, there are many reasons why you need to practice. I mean, um, because you want to correct something on the actual presentation or on the way that you say something. So that's why it's very important to practice, right? Because you will be able to correct, change things, check the time that you spend in speaking. Uh, I mean, sometimes you need to speak more time or you need to reduce the presentation. So it's going to give you that one. Uh, also, you are going to listen to the words. Sometimes when we write the ideas, when you write the presentation, you have an idea, but whenever you do the presentation, maybe you are going to feel that the words are not good enough, that you need to change something. And also, you will be able to, to use the body language, right? To make pauses, to, to check the kind of voice that you are going to use. So as you were telling, this is going to be together with the techniques that we're going to use, with the kind of presentation. And then you will be able to, to be happy whenever you practice and you finish practicing your presentation, you will say, this is what I want, right? This is what I want to convey. This is what I want my audience to feel whenever I'm speaking. And then uh, you will be able to achieve your goal, your goal on the presentation. That is, I mean, to come be a message to make them or to convince them to do something. So that is, this is something that definitely we need to do whenever we're going to not only provide a presentation, but to speak in public, right? To know what is gonna happen. Good. Speak, Don Reed. This is for Anna Claudia. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, Anna Claudia, this, and then do the other one, okay? Okay. okay. 
uh, speak and don't re speak, don't read. Don't simply read your talk word for word from a page, from a paper, I'm sorry. This gets pretty boring for listeners. Spoken language is less formal and worthy than written language. So reading makes you sound stiff and will damper any sense of energy or spontaneity in your performance. Reading uh, from a paper forces you to look down instead of speaking to the audience. Instead, if you have a script, turn it into notes that you can talk from and glance at only occasionally. It's less important that you capture the text word for word than that you present the main ideas in natural and relaxed way. This is where rehearsing helps. It not only improves your performance skills, it enables you to better remember what you want to say. Perfect, what do you get on this one? Oh, totally agree, it's so boring to listen to someone reading and basically reading is didn't practice the reading and is mistaken. <laughs> <laughs> and that makes that uh, you once you uh, get away or you get away from the desk or whatever you are or to stand up and go out. Yeah, it's better to get the main idea to write notes like uh, like the body of the, the main message you will explain. And it's important to understand First, uh, the person that is going to do the presentation is a mass that uh, needs to understand and handle the topic or the subject in the best way. So that will be helping to transmit the main idea to the audience. And in that way, using notes, it will be just as a reminder not to forget concept, or to follow up an order, let's say in that way, like a kind of a mini agenda, an internal, a personal agenda. Okay, very good. So definitely, I mean, for first of all, we don't have to put a lot of words as we already know, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah, reading and then go to the next slide and read that, I mean, you are going to lose the attention of everybody. Everybody's going to to lose that part, right? So they say, okay. Exactly, and also I'm thinking that also this situation applies when you have a presentation and you read exactly what the presentation shows because people in order to not, to forget what to say, most of them they write what they're going to say in the presentation. And so it's uh, distracting the audience because uh, there are people that they read in a different pace uh, yeah. and they will be reading faster. So as the soon they are ending reading the paragraph, they will get bored. So that would be distractive, I think. Okay, definitely. So uh, yeah, this is not going to be good at all. In mind that you are in a presentation and then the person starts reading and as he says here it's not natural. I mean, it's like mm -hmm. um, kind of weird and uh, you don't believe, you don't believe what the person is trying to tell you. So, uh, because you don't believe exactly the message that they are saying. So, yeah, because oh. they write in this light what they are going to say. I was in a presentation in that way. <laughs> it was so boring. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's not good at all, different. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, as uh, we discussed also in other classes, I know that sometimes for some people it's like natural. I'm going to speak and I'm going to explain and I'm going to do my best. For some other people, maybe it's a challenge to speak for an audience. But as we say before, if you practice, you can become very good at something. I just mm -hmm. remember, I just remember when I read about, for example, Michael Jordan, that he was at school and he really wanted to be part of the basketball team. And he went and made a test, you know, for mm -hmm. for being on the team. And the uh, the teacher says, "No, I'm sorry, you are not that good. Please uh, do another sport, but don't do this one." But he really wanted to be a basketball player. And every night after he made the homework and uh, 
he uh, was having dinner with his parents, he practiced every single day. And he really, really, really do that for a long time until, I mean, he became the best NBA player, right? So um, that is up to everybody. Everybody can be good at something. The only thing that you need to do is to identify what you need to improve and practice, right? That is the best thing that you can do. That's right. Good, perfect. You be in the school teacher. I'm sorry? That is usually in the school. Uh, yeah. yeah, I remember something like that one, right? Yeah. Yeah, that is pretty sad. I mean, but there are errors that you can learn from. I mean, if somebody says to you, you are not able to do this, I mean, don't don't give up. If you really want something, work and practice. I know the time, I know that there are many things to do, but if you really, really want something, anybody can achieve whatsoever you want. So just it's a matter for you to go for it, right? Okay, so uh, Fernando, be yourself. Okay. Uh, be yourself. Even in a formal speech, allow your personality to come true. When you're nervous, it's easy to tense up and become a little awkward, wooden. But make an effort to stay natural, smile, and make eye contact. It will establish better rapport and credibility if you are being yourself, and your audience will listen more. If they can you see as a genuine, even if it means being a little less technically perfect. Good, what do you get on this one? Uh, this point is similar to the A and the high of the video, authenticity, oh. because you need to be yourself for presenting a very topic. And if you need to get a message to the people, you need to do in your own your own form. Maybe it's sometimes it's, it's a good idea to review some videos of some technical professional and try to apply. But in in a sense or in el fondo? Uh, at the bottom. At the bottom. Okay. But at the bottom, when you try to apply uh, professional technique on the bottom you need to be yourself and talk like you you talk with your with your people know and try to and try to get the measures in the form that you do in your uh, your comfort zone maybe something like that <laughs> but, and sometimes it's very difficult because um, not all the people have the skill to talk in public, um, but it's possible to it's possible to get, like you say, uh, because um, I remember when I was at school, I have a classmate that the only thing that they did in the presentation it was read, <laughs> like the point that the point before, um, but today I know I know this I know his work and he speak in public in a very good form, better than me, <laughs> better than me if you like. So it's possible to to get the, the skill. Okay. Uh, very good. So that is it. I mean, yes, as you say, we are different. Uh, you can see, for example, the the third, uh, the the one that we see about the videos, and we have seen that for a long time since the very first one in the advance. But everybody is very good presenting, but they are different. I mean, they use different presentations, they use different uh, techniques about speaking something, uh, and that happens to everybody. I mean, here everybody is different, and one of the things that you need to consider is yes, you need to practice. Uh, what you need to improve, definitely. But there are things that you are, you are good at. So you need to to get the potential of that one and uh, use that one. So that is something very, very good. And then uh, it's going to allow us to be comfortable whenever we're speaking. So that is the thing. 
whenever you are in front of the people, for example, yes, every time at the beginning, maybe you are going to be like kind of nervous, right? I remember I, I being, you know, I have uh, spoken, I have delivered speech in front of, I remember that the biggest one was around 1,000 people, sometimes 200 people, 300 people. It is totally different than delivering the class, for example. So different things and be comfortable on what you are doing and try to convey the message in a very good way so everybody gets exactly what you want to do. But uh, that is something that we need to work for, to be comfortable whenever we are in front of people. And, and like, teacher, like the paragraph, like the paragraph say, uh, you need to, you need to be a genuine, even if it means being a little uh, less technically, because sometimes people enjoy more listen to a genuine person that technically because less uh, seems boring for them. That is and, true. Mm -hmm. yeah, when you are genuine, then you can use some job and people enjoy more. <laughs> so that is so true. I mean, when you are genuine, when you are yourself, when you feel comfortable and you know what you're saying, I mean, everybody's going to feel that one and they are going to be um, nice. They are going to understand your points and it's going to be better. I mean, the message has been delivered in a very good way. And also remember that everybody gets nervous. I mean, I remember the very first time that I was going to deliver a class here in Inglés Corporativo, I guess I was kind of nervous. I mean, I never delivered a class uh, via internet. So that was the very first time in the tool. I mean, uh, whenever you are in person, sometimes you can do dynamics, games, stand up, run here, but here is not possible. So I was thinking, what am I gonna do? But I'm here, right? So uh, I know that some topics sometimes are kind of difficult, but at the end, we laugh, we understand things, we learn things. I learn from you and that is uh, very good. So it's very nice and everybody gets nervous. I mean, even the most famous singer, whenever they are going to go out to the stage, uh, the very, I mean, the first minutes, they are kind of nervous. I mean, not only because of them, because what happens if something happens, if somebody fails, I mean, but once you start, everything is fine. I found that it's more easy to teach and therefore online that person. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's kind of good. I really like it. I really like to, I mean, it's very nice because I'm here at home and I connect myself three, four minutes before the class instead of going out and preparing things. There are advantages and disadvantages, of course, because, for example, in the classes, sometimes I get my guitar and we sing. Here is kind of weird, it's not possible to do it, but we can do other things. So that is good thing. You can get the best out of any situation, right? Perfect. So number four, aim for a positive state of mind and a confident attitude, okay? So that's what we're discussing. So uh, Suleyma Ivan, is it possible for you? Not possible. Uh, let's see, Jose Wilfredo Ayala. Sure. Okay. Yes. Give me one moment. Of course. Okay. So, aim for a positive state of mind and a confident attitude. Uh, try to project confidence even if you don't feel it. Remind yourself that you can do it <clears throat> and that the audience want to, the audience want you to succeed. Uh, visualize a positive outcome, harmonize your nervous energy and tell yourself that you are excited, that you have interest in engagement materials to share with the audience. As you walk to the front of the room, carry yourself in a confidence manner. Stand straight, look at the group, 
take a breath and a smile, concentrate on what you will tell the audience rather than you degree of the nervousness. This is help you to forget your nervous and focus on your topic and your listeners you so you'll better able to get them engagement in your speech. Okay, what did you get on this <clears> one? <throat> um, well, this is that you need to be really positive and also you need to be confident when you are uh, uh, driving some information and because you need to sound like you really know the topic that you are discussing with them. And uh, you need to be uh, really positive to, to transmit uh, better up, up, to transmit a better infor to transmit um, the information in better way. Okay. So yes, uh, as we were discussing before, right? Yeah, sometimes we get nervous. That is normal. Everybody's nervous sometimes. So, and then, but of course, you need to not think about that one. If you start thinking, I am going to fail, I'm going to make some mistakes, or some other people sometimes they try to memorize. You remember when we were at school, sometimes we try to memorize every single word that we were going to say, and that is a mistake. You just need to understand and, uh, practice what you are going to say and then that is it so if you instead of thinking about what can be wrong if you instead of that one focus on on the on the message that you want to transmit on the the words that you want to say everything is going to be fine and uh, the starting is the most important as we discussed that before as well um, whenever you are in the first minutes of the presentation, there you need to relax, and try to do your best, engage people. And once you see that the people are engaged, everything's going to be easier. Good. Next one, number five says, use a verbal sign posting. Roxana. Okay. Use verbal signs posting. Given an indication of what will be coming later in your talk, is an effective way to maintain audience interest. Use transition to draw your audience a roadmap of your presentation. For example, in a moment, I'll provide some interesting examples, but first, there are Four ways of preventing this. Firstly, secondly, thirdly, finally. You can also link ideas or section of your presentation to help your audience follow the overall structure. Has I immediately, has I mentioned earlier, the first medal was successful okay what did you get on this one well um i think that the paragraph uh, is trying to explain that when we are uh, working in a presentation maybe uh, we need to create um maybe a chain cadena right uh, yeah chain yeah, maybe a, a, a little change with uh, the examples or uh, at the end of the presentation, you can provide a little, um, maybe a little uh, explanation to, to, to create, um, maybe, how do you say resuming? A wrap up, you can say, or summarize. Wrap up. Wrap up. Wrap up or summarize. A summary. Summary. Maybe uh, when you are presenting, you at the, at the end of your presentation, you can provide a summary. 
and try to uh, give a, a maybe a logical structure about all the presentation uh, has a little change and try to provide the principal uh, points maybe I don't know Okay, so yes, I mean, uh, this is linked to the one that we discussed before, a roadmap. So sometimes mm -hmm. you link one thing with the second slide on the fifth slide, and you are, since you are speaking about uh, one topic overall, yeah, it's possible to, to say, okay, we check already the first method and the second method, remember that we're going to do this. So that is going to be something nice and you can use some transitional words or phrases for you to uh, to let the audience know what is going to happen, how everything is linked. So that is a very good thing. Good, number six, use examples, illustrations, and humor. Uh, Jose Rivas. Not possible. Jessica Janari. Not possible. Um, David Samuel. Okay. Use examples, illustrations, and homework. Use examples for verbal illustrations to create interest. Choose them to suit your audience. An example that comes within the experience of the audience can create interest. A humorous remark can break the ice and establish rapport, especially early on. Good. What do you get on that one? Okay, this is a very important. I, I remember a, a guy giving a speech, uh, and uh, he was using example for a, a golf court. And uh, I think in El Salvador, there are very, very, not much people, uh, not many people, sorry, not many people play golf. Not many people know the, the golf course. And this example was not received for the audience because uh, we don't understand what this is trying to illustrate. It is important, use example, give example, but using the real life of the people that are in the in the audience, and the examples make the connection with the with the uh, life. Uh, the people uh, start to know how the the speech, how the information can help them to to live their life because this is the, that uh, all of us are looking for. <laughs> we, we everybody we know to want to know how to live the life, how to apply the, the knowledge to, to our life. And for that reason, the examples are a very good point that uh, even when you are teaching class, the, the, the students always ask, and uh, what is important for me? What is important? Uh, I can factor in a polynomial, but what is important? <laughs> <laughs> what, I, what I need to, to factor in a polynomial, and I need to explain then, okay, if you are a, a, in a marketplace and you are making a, a distribution of the, the items or, or a supermarket and you give the, the distribution of the supermarket in, in this empty space, you need to apply factorizing. Your, your mind will do it. But if you, if you forget, uh, you have a, a everything, you have a, a whole thing, and you need to make the parts of the whole scenes to put the, the what you need to put in every area of the, of the whole thing. That is important. And uh, okay, the, they, the, this explanation gives them a, a reason to, to pay attention to, to what, is, what are they doing. And examples are a, a very good point in everything we need to speak. Okay, very good, perfect. So yes, yeah, whenever you want to make a point 
And whenever you want to emphasize something, examples are very good. Illustrations sometimes, I mean, pictures about something. Um, jokes, I believe that depends on the kind of presentation. And I mean, sometimes we know that we are good with jokes, right? So sometimes we know that we are not good with jokes. So, so it depends on that as well. So you need to be sure that the joke is well told and that everybody will understand and have a laugh. If it's not working, it's better not to use that anymore, definitely. Okay, number seven, ask question and invite participation. Uh, this is going to be for, let's say, uh, Dora Elizabeth. Seven, ask question and invite participation. Asking question of your audience through your talk helps hold their attention and interest. It also develops a connection between you and the group. Asking question means you are inviting them to participate and drawing them into a mutual thinking process. For example, who can estimate the number of individuals left permanently injured by road accidents? Can anyone suggest, su can anyone suggest some alternatives? Suggest. Can anyone suggest some alternative use for plastic bull wrap? Someone's home is broken into every seven minutes. Can you believe it? You can also speak directly to individual and dentist member is appropriate. For example, I take it from your reaction that you you read something similar, Sarah. Okay, what do you get on this one? Uh, it's important the participation, the listener in the speech. Uh, one forms the inviting a, a, a listener, a participation is a make a question then. Uh, uh, about question about the topic and I I think is this okay very good mm -hmm. so yes um, asking questions so it's going to help you in many ways uh, to involve everybody to get everybody's attention. Remember that we can do different kinds of questions. So what do you think about this, for example? Or can you please give me an example about this? Or how do you feel about this? So rhetorical questions, many, many kinds of questions we can ask. So we can keep the attention and get everybody involved. Remember that you are presenting, but there are other people also need to be part of it. So that is a very important thing. Okay, number eight, be aware of eye contact and body language. Uh, this is going to be for Giselle. Okay, teacher, be aware of eye contact and body language. Make eye contact with the audience to help establish a connection. Glance at the faces of group members and don't be afraid to meet people's eyes, but don't stare. Use the three second method. Look straight into the eyes of an audience member for three seconds at a time. Aim for direct eye contact with a number of people and every now and then glance at the whole group while speaking. Eye contact not only established a bond, it can help you register your progress. Faces can indicate interest, confusion and boredom. Um, what is boredom, teacher? A boredom is like when you are bored. Ah, oh, okay. So you can gauge reaction to what is being said. Body language is also important. Standing, walking, or moving about with appropriate hand gesture or facial expression is far preferable to sitting down or standing still with head down and reading from a paper. 
use audiovisual aids or props for enhancement if appropriate and necessary. Good. What do you get in this one? That if you use these two, uh, like, um, these two things, eye contact and body language, you could, your presentation maybe could, could be uh, less boring. And also uh, you can connect and transmit uh, what you want to transmit to your audience. And it also helps to, to keep your audience like, uh, like a paying attention about what you are saying. And at the end, you can have the result that you want. Okay, very good. So definitely eye contact and body language is important. Uh, and it's important to, I mean, body language, you know, to present, to, to speak, to the, the way that you speak is going to be linked also with your body language. Eye contact, on the other hand, is important for, to, to get a connection with somebody there in the audience. And it's important to have eye contact with everybody, right? Or the whole group sometimes in, in general. So that is a very important thing. Learn from the pros. That is going to be for, um, let's see, uh, Marcus. Okay, I learn from the pros. A great, a great way to learn what group speakers do is to watch them give the speech, know what works and what doesn't, and adapt do this example into your own style. Know which lectures are particularly interesting. Attend class and watch what they do. Watch some TED talks online. They tend to be high quality presentation and provide some great example. Good, what do you get on this one? Okay, and uh, a good practice is to, to learn from the, the master teachers, uh, I don't know if it's called work, uh, but the person who is professionally in doing that, that thing though, uh, explain something and uh, engage the audience and always keep the, the, the speech interesting. So it's important to, to watch and take notes about their, their body language, their um, uh, variety of tone also, and the words they use also. And a lot of things they, they used to, to be more fluent and to be more um, frozen in that, in that field. Hey, yeah. very good. Uh, go ahead. Uh, only that. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So yes, when you watch the professionals, you learn, right? So you, even better, if you see a presentation that touches you, that you say, ah, that is true. I really believe what this guy is saying. Another thing that we can do is that one, to analyze the way they present, the way they convince you, the way they've made you feel something. So you can get those ideas and of course you are going to do it yourself uh, in your own way so uh, but it's a good a good practice okay number 10 be aware of technique um, fernando gonzalez be aware of te technique pace speaking to an audience require a pace lower than normal conversation Nervous speakers tend to speed up, so avoid this. Try varying your pace to create different effects. Try slow measure speech for a point which is serious or need emphasizing speeding out little to length excitement or urgency. Aim for a comfortable medium pitch. High pitched voices can sound harsh. 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 Mean harsh, uh, yeah, it's like uh, flat, you know, it's like uh, with no feeling. Oh, okay, oh. high pitched voices can sound hard, and high pitch is often due to shallow breathing and nervousness. Deep, steady breathing and a delivery attempt to lower the pitch would help reduce nervous variation in pitch can be effective, for example. 
which could be raised to add emphasis to a question. However, used with regard to frequent use of high pitch can irritate an audience. Tom. Tom is the vocal quality which expresses feeling. It can let warmth and sincerity your voice or reveal how strongly you feel about a topic. It can evoke a similar response from the audience. From the audience. In academic presentation, a hardly critical or judgmental tone should be avoided. Um, volume, volume, right? Volume. Volume, yeah. Volume, okay. Your voice should be low enough for the listener in the back rows to hear com com comfortably. You can also vary volume to make your talk more lively, but by shouting and pausing. In experience, speakers are often afraid to pause. They see pausing as a failure in fluency, but experienced speakers use pause to good effort. Pausing can, fo can focus attention on what has been said or what is about to be said. It can also allow the audience to digest information or can be used to prepare them for a change in ideas. Good. So what do you get on everything here? <laughs> okay. You need to be aware of your pace, your pitch, your tone, your volume, and you can, you can carry your tongue. You can, uh, you need to, to put attention to your, to your forward speak because if you sound high, uh, you can, maybe you can sound like harsh, <laughs> harsh yeah. or, you can and you can irritate your audience. So you need to you need like the, the one of the points saying you need to be yourself, and that include the form you you talk. You need to talk like just like you talk, and that's it. Very good. So yes, you need to. This is very important. I mean, when you are presenting, uh, I mean. Your voice is the most important tool. Second is the presentation, definitely, but your voice is the most important, the way that you speak. And uh, yes, uh, sometimes, I mean, it's not the same to speak or uh, to have a normal conversation than to present. So you are a different person. There. You are another yourself, right? So that is something that we need to practice and consider whenever we are doing this. Okay, my friends, uh, do you have any questions before we finish? Okay, clear as horchata. Monday, my friends, you you are going to present. So I'm looking forward for that one, nice. Also remember that we need to finish uh, section one, section two on the platform and also the midterm test before the class of Monday. So it's a good idea if we do that through uh, the weekend. So you have the time, right? It's not, you know, that it's not complicated. Let's check the attendance then, and then we go to bed. Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. Present teacher. Good. Andres Giovanni Valdivieso Portillo. Present. Good. David Samuel Galdames Monterrosa. Present teacher. Good. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. Good. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin Gonzalez Martinez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejia. Present. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Present teacher. Good, thank you. Uh, Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present. Good for you is the 101 today, Jose Wilfredo. Juan Miguel Brand Mejia. Present teacher. Good. 
Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ivette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. William Alexander Ramírez Flores. Present. Good. Jessica Janari Cortez Díaz. Here. Good. Suleyma Ivonne Moreno de Hernández. Present. Good. Erwin Lagos Andrade. Present teacher. Very good. Okay, my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you tonight. I hope you have a very nice weekend. Uh, rest very well and see you next Monday with your presentation. Good night and dream in English. Good night. Thank you, teacher. Good night. Good night. Good night, Thank teacher. You, Bye, guys. Night. Good night. Nice weekend. Charlie? Uh, teacher, I, I, I don't know if I can take some minutes to help me with the with exercise in the platform. Uh, definitely. Which one is it? Okay, thanks. Uh, the, let me see. It's the, the exercise 2.2 and the second part. The exercise, exercise 2. Okay. I don't know what I run this one. Okay, so the second one where you need to to type something, right? Yes, yes. yes. Okay, which one? I have, huh? I have now. Did you ask Jim to take the dog for a walk? Oh, that has an error. I don't know why, you know. But you should enter. Did you ask Jimmy with W M? Ah, uh, <laughs> Jimmy with W. Okay, then Jimmy. <laughs> okay. 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 Uh, okay. Thanks. And the the five, uh, the four, the yeah, fifth. The last one on that one, okay. Yeah, um, what you need to enter is this. I advise you not to interrupt. Not, um, uh -huh. not, to. not to interrupt. Uh -huh. Malcolm, Malcolm during the, the next meeting. meeting. Period. Yeah. And then he Here. gets, uh -huh. uh, he gets very upset when people do that. Period. Okay. Okay, okay, thanks. And the uh, the four of the first part, no, it's not. Ah, uh, yes. Six. Yeah, the uh, fourth also has a mistake. Uh, I reported that already, but there okay. is no correct answer. I mean, there is an answer that is the correct one, but uh, the system doesn't take any. So I reported that already. Okay, okay, I understand. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, okay. it's a pleasure, okay. Okay, good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. Uh, Goodbye. Happy weekend. Goodbye. Hello. Okay, Hello. Bye. How teacher. are you? Hello, teacher. So far, so good, teacher. By nice. now, yeah, I'm resting. Nice. Very good. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. So, uh, well, you have the experience on this one. So, the first question is uh, uh, How do you feel that you're moving on? Do you feel that you're learning, that you're getting something? Yeah, yeah. I guess I'm I'm increasing my listening and also my vocabulary is increasing a lot. So every day I guess that I learn something new. So that's really good. Perfect, nice. And uh, do you have any question about this module or the previous modules? Um not the truth. No, I don't have any any question. I don't have any question about this on the last on the last model. So okay, nice, every, very good. Everything running well. Perfect, that is fantastic. So let me ask you: uh, Are you ready for the presentation on Monday? Uh, I'm preparing. I'm preparing. Just I need to some uh, what. Just I need to cover some some a specific step, but I guess that I will be ready. Very good. So I'm looking forward to listen to everybody's presentation. So let's see how it goes. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, I oh. think so that that's gonna be good because every day I make a presentation. So about the the performance, but now I don't wanna talk about the performance. It's not that other topic but i guess that's gonna be fine i yeah i know i know that you're gonna do a very good job so 
I just want to check about the performance and the, uh, the way that you speak and the topic that you're going to present. Definitely, that is something that I'm thinking. Yeah, that's right. Okay, very good. So, Jose Wilfredo, if you don't have any other questions, remember that you can chat with me directly or and uh, on the group. And of course, I hope to see you this Monday in the whole classes that I'm missing. Okay, perfect picture. I am really appreciate your time and thank you for that. And any doubt, I will reach you. Definitely. It will be a pleasure to help you out. Okay, teacher. Have a wonderful weekend. So, yeah. Bye-bye now. Okay. Okay, bye.